Are you a Matterport service provider that has done virtual tours of schools, museums, theaters, or other public or commercial spaces? Are you wondering how you could go back to these clients with an add-on to repurpose their existing Matterport tours? Are you wondering how the Matterport Matter Pack can be leveraged to make more money? Stay tuned. Hi, all. I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, August 24th, 2023, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today. Intro to our set service provider network for Matterport service providers. Our subject matter experts today are our set founder and CEO, Bill Gregory. Hello. Our set chief technology officer, Michael Schmidt. Hello. Our set advisor and chief strategy officer, Larry Dana. And our set lead Unity developer, Michael Probst. Hey, Michael. Hey, Mike. Hey, Bill. Larry, thanks for being on the show today. Thanks for having us, Dan. Bill, before we jump into the topic of our set service provider network for Matterport service providers, uh, I, I uh, let, let's talk a little bit about the big picture of our set as a company. I, I noticed on the uh, the our set website rset.com. Our set is a software application that turns Matterport 3D scans of real world environments into high, highly immersive physics-based reality simulations where high risk events can be safely replicated, customized, and shared to save lives and reduce injuries in the line of duty. Uh, that, that's a lot. Can you unpack that for us? Sure, happy to. So RSET is, stands for the Rapid Synthetic Environment Tool that came out of the military acronym for what we were doing. We started about a decade ago working for the Office of Naval Research. They wanted a tool where they could scan an environment quickly and go back and rehearse, do after action reviews, do pre-planning in it. So they they looked for a solution and we came up with this, this tool to let them do a quick scan using whatever they had with them at the time. Uh, we ended up using Matterports for most of our work and the matter packs that you can pull out of the, the scans. And this was a great solution. They, they enjoyed it and we've worked with them for quite some time. From that, we pivoted and said, so where else can this be useful? And we've moved into the first responder market. So now we can actually take a scan we can set up a mass casualty situation and let you do triage. We can set up a fire and let you actually address that fire in that space. We can do um, a, a shooting situation if needed and let someone train if there's actually a live shooting event, what would you do in that space? So it's it really open-ended and it's get, it gets used also after actions. So we've been working with fire departments after an event, they do a scan of a fire and they can come in and rebuild the scene and show where the flames were and show where firefighters were and what happened during that scene. Let them recreate it and do a whole review and teach other firefighters to avoid problems they might have seen in that time. Great. Uh, Mike, you have a video to roll for us? Yeah, let me get that queued up real quick. All right, hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, there's no sound to this, so I'll just talk over it. Uh, I'm sure our audience is well aware of what a digital twin is and the the tools that are used to to capture those. Um, and like Bill said, our goal is to add value to those twins, um, primarily for first response, EMS, fire, triage uh, training purposes. So we are able to rapidly customize and, and our, our users are able to rapidly customize their environments for the training that is specific to them in the environments uh, that are specific to them. And you can go as deep or as simple as you like in your customizations. Uh, we've got an ecosystem built around the concept of sharing that training uh, amongst other departments. And yeah, the, the, the types of training are, are varied and basically limitless from suppression to triage to command sim. We've got tools built in uh, that very easily allow our users to develop um, new training protocols in their custom environments, uh, and then to rapidly iterate on those. And so that fast feedback is really the value add for, for first responders to be able to get an idea of how they would respond to a particular event in their own communities. So we're, we're talking about 
Matterport plus RSET in order to save lives and reduce casualties. Exactly. We want the sets and reps out there for the first responders, those that help us, we're helping them. And so you're enabling training that perhaps either is it, is it that the training without this tool or, or maybe Bill, you could just help us understand before there was Matterport plus our set, how was this type of training done? Well, in the instance of a, a first responder coming into a mass casualty, they actually did what was called teddy bear triage. So you would go into a building that was an, an occupied building where they were going to uh, mock up a scenario and they would take a duffel bag full of teddy bears and say, this one's a 35 year old male with a GSW to the chest. And they would spread those through the building and then they would turn loose first responders to go through the building and find the teddy bear and mark it, tag it, come through and do uh, a full scenario. We can do that now in any building that you want. Uh, active building, you once it's scanned, a school, a library, whatever it might be, you could come in and say, what if this happened? And here are the injuries. We can recreate unfortunate events in a scan and actually then relive that event somewhat to have a training scenario from it. So that's kind of the general idea. Here, we, we work with our fire department very often, and a lot of places probably do this. When a building is scheduled to be demolished, they will train in that building, the fire department will, for some time before it's demolished. But once it's torn down, you can't do anything with it. So we go in and scan that building, or another service provider can scan that building, but we take the matter packs, and they can do scenario after scenario after scenario in that space uh, for as long as they want. So and let's, Bill, let, let, excuse me. No, you're good. I, I was I was just gonna to tag on to that. Um, the, Bill mentioned the teddy bear triage. There's there's also a, another type of training that a lot of our fire, police, EMS get involved with at least once or twice a year if they can accommodate it, and that is live uh, in a building cross training where everyone gets to see what everyone else is doing. But even the best, most logistically uh, lubricated departments out there that know what they're doing can really only run those scenarios once or twice a year. So it's a matter of, of manpower uh, and it's a matter of logistics. And uh, even once and twice a year uh, isn't enough uh, exposure to those type of events to reduce the friction between departments that is just part of the problem uh, when responding to those critical events. And so our set makes it incredibly easy to load up a scan and get fire, police, EMS, all manner of departments in the same environment training together at the same time from their desks. So I'm a Matterport service provider. I'm a little bit confused. I've, I've done a Matterport tour of a school or a museum, a theater, a commercial space, a, a um, uh, some kind of public space. Um, Mike, Bill mentioned Matterport, Matterpack, uh, what is that? How does that fit into Matterport plus our set? Uh, okay. He said you, I didn't know who it was directed to. I'm sorry. <laughs> he said you might, but go ahead. Uh, no. So, so yeah, the matter, the matter packs specifically feed our set. Our set is the engine uh, that enables for the improvements and the, the training protocols to be developed inside that software. Uh, but what we found a lot of our competitors will, will rely on generic canned environments. And we've been to several uh, fire conferences here in the last few months. And if you ask any of them like, hey, is there a building in your jurisdiction that keeps you up at night thinking about having to respond to an event there? Every single one of them has, oh, yeah, if the coal plant went up, this would be a huge problem. Or, uh, yeah, if this particular school or this apartment building went up we or, or had an event, it would be chaos. Uh, and so the value of combining Matterport, matter packs and our set is that you get to train in your environments. It's not a generic school, it's your school. It's not a generic coal plant, it's the coal plant down the street from you. And that is, is really impactful when it comes to training fidelity and improving overall outcomes. So well, Bill, what, what, to, to add on to what Mike and Bill said, Bill, it, my, and Dan, it's at the end of the day, we've been talking to a lot, hundreds of fire captains, fire chiefs, et cetera, the last few months or so. And what they're sharing with us is the real problem they're facing is in many cases, budgets are being cut. In many cases, they cannot execute as much live training as they would like to do given budgets and time. So they have to think about 
how do I get the right level of training and complexity on different incidents into the hands of my hundreds, sometimes thousands in larger cities, firefighters and folks facing their, their EMS. So they're saying that things we need is we need sets and reps. We need complex situations that we can create on our own. We need to be able to overlay them over different periods of time to understand changes in environments and then be able to train on those in ways that are cost effective, that allow us not to burn lots of travel dollars and hotel dollars, et cetera, in our district or our environment, and be able to get the sets and reps and training and quality in complexity that we want. So, you know, we're hearing them saying we're getting budgets cut 10, 20, 30 percent. I got to provide more with less. And the combination of Matterport, Matterpacks, our set, and if we need to help, um, Matterport service providers out there who are working in these industries, we will help them drive those complex scenarios, deliver them to market. So it's good for everybody. It's good for the public. It's good for the local communities. And it's also good for the service provider to drive their revenue and value to their clients. So Larry, just for clarification, when, when you say reps, that means repetition of the uh, yes. clean exercise. Okay, great. And then so, yeah, sets and reps is sets and repetitions because in many cases they're doing less than they used to do because they used to do a lot of it through live training. Now that has become extremely expensive in many cases and or being cut. And but these individuals who are heroes protecting people in our communities have to have the sets and repetitions in complex scenarios. Awesome. Uh, Mike, I want to come back to you again on that Matterport Matter Pack. Um, I really want you to, to assume, even though I've done hundreds of Matterport scans, assume that I don't know what a Matterport Matter Pack is. Help us understand what that is, why that's so important. I, I might even make the statement to, to, to say that a, a Matterport Matter Pack, the Matterport data, may be more valuable to a client than the actual Matterport view that we think of as being used for marketing purposes. So I'm a Matterport service provider. I go into work Matterport workshop. I type my mat dot Matterport. I get to my Matterport tour. Uh, I see there's a button. It says add-ons. Maybe I've looked at it. Maybe I haven't, but I'll go click on that button. It says add-ons. I see this thing listed called Matterport Matter Pack. It cost me $49 and I have no idea what that is. Why is that essential to understand what that is and how Matterport Matter Pack plus our set equals an amazing solution of saving lives, reducing injuries. Got it. Okay. Sorry, I misunderstood the the, the previous question. That's a good clarification. So for, for probably 99% of, of Matterport producers or Matterport users, you're right. They will be interacting with uh, the 3D walkthrough, the tour that you view on my.matterport.com, the link that you share on Zillow. Um, those that data that viewport that you see is an amalgamation of images that you're kind of walking through you're you're stepping from from sphere to sphere and able to look around your environment but you'll note there's no capacity for interaction i know matterport has the capabilities of of measurements that's using partial or portions of the data that that we end up using that are a part of that matter pack uh, in the end so when you go to add-ons and click add matter pack and you pay $49, what are you getting? Uh, you'll be getting a zip file that's available either immediately or close to immediately through Matterport. You can download that to your computer. Inside that zip file, there's gonna be a, a collection of files uh, that represent the 3D content of whatever space you had just scanned. So what was pictures and photo spheres on the web once you download that matter pack, that becomes a three-dimensional model that we use to render inside of our sets engine and to add uh, fire, smoke, um, you can collide with walls. You're walking through it instead of warping from sphere to sphere. So, so for clarification on that Matterport matter pack, and even Mike, while we're talking, maybe Michael could bring up a, a, a real environment so that we could look at the data view of Matterport. Uh, is that file, that Matterport matter pack, 
contains a file called obj, a .obj file. And that's the secret sauce that powers everything that you're talking about today about our set for police, fire, emergency medical responders, et, et cetera. And, exactly. And so if Michael calls up uh, an example of, uh, of an RSET uh, um, uh, uh, synthetic environment, uh, what we're going to actually be looking at is the data view of Matterport. And that data view looks exceptionally rough. So, uh, Michael, is that something you're able to, to share with us? Yeah. So uh, as Michael calls up an example of a, of a, a tour, uh, this actually looks really good. So that's that looks like the marketing view that I'm looking at, Michael. Yeah, but this is this is actually the 3D data that, that he's got running. This is inside our set, uh, a scan of a school that's that's near us. Um, wow, so, that's yeah. crazy. It looks really good. Okay, so let's hold right there for a moment. If you just hold hold right there, that's awesome. So what, what I really want to show is that this data view of the Matterport tour, the, the .obj file that we're looking at, you see all of these rough edges and textures, and you go, gosh, that looks like... Uh, a mess um, uh, for, from a marketing standpoint, meaning if the, this was a house, you would never use the data view to sell the house because it, it looks like the house has been deconstructed. So uh, I'm going to imagine, and maybe uh, Bill, you could jump in here, that in a, a police, fire, emergency medical responders could care less that that uh, that computer console that's that's straight ahead is is has rough edges on it. Uh, really, you just want to understand the the space. Yeah. So a lot of the scans, and by the way, they're getting better. And the Pro Three has even a little bit better output of the OBJs. So, but the scans themselves are uh, are if you have a small radius item like the leg of a chair or a table or something like that, very often that doesn't scan well for an OBJ. Uh, what we can do, it, so well, we can correct that in later. But so, a police officer would be more concerned with how long is this hall, how many doorways are off of here. How if I'm a firefighter, I know I can go down here and turn right and go in this room, and there's actually a little coat closet in the back that when we're clearing this building, make sure you clean it, make sure kids aren't hiding in that space. So is, you're more concerned you know, with. I'm sorry, Michael. Could you just uh, be moving through the tour while Bill's talking? Yeah, thank you. But see, flat, flat planar surfaces like this scan really well. Uh, they look great. It's very often small items like this or some reflective surfaces don't. But that doesn't really matter when you're doing a training scenario. You know where the building is. If you're going to walk through the space, you, it still does pretty well and you can get the general idea. But the chairs on top of the desk aren't going to look that great. Now, we can in the software, you can you can cut this out and replace those chairs with actually good looking chairs if you want to make a better model. No, this isn't for trying to sell real estate. It's not trying to sell the home. You want the really high resolution images that look pretty, but that's not what we're doing here. We're actually letting people set up scenarios for training in this space. And again, I still think it looks pretty good for what you're getting out of this, uh, But but you're right. It's not the same as the 4K images that you would pull down. Well, I wanted to point this out because a Matterport service provider who is really shooting spaces for the purpose of marketing might look at an OBJ file in four seconds and say, oh, I could never use this for marketing and say, I can't use the OBJ. That has no value to me. And I, I would suggest that Matterport Matter Pack plus R set is is perhaps even more valuable to a potential client than the marketing view because this view uh, staged by uh, our set and, and and I don't know Michael if you want to you know start to add smoke fire sounds uh, uh, casualties etc that 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 this this is an opportunity to save lives uh, reduce injuries uh, for a client. Uh, and well, Dan, there's there's another benefit to it. I uh, wanted to make sure to point out that once you download the Matter Pack, that's yours. 
and you don't have to maintain the Matterport subscription for that. So if you have a client that just wants to keep the geometry of their space, they could have a seat of our set and download the matter pack and have nothing else to do with Matterport indefinitely. Okay, so I, I think that that probably gives us a, a good overview of, of Matterport plus our set for kind of real world simulations for police, fire and emergency medical responders. And I should say that we actually did a, a one hour show with you all uh, not too long ago. And so anyone that says, oh, I, that's interesting, but could you show me more? Uh, you can see an entire hour on this topic if you go to wgan.info forward slash R set on WGAN. Um, Bill, before we jump into today's topic, intro to R set uh, service provider network for Matterport service providers, is there anything else that we should talk about in terms of schools, museums, theaters, public spaces, commercial spaces, meets, police, fire, and emergency medical responders? Well, other than that, they just like doing the, they want to do training in the spaces. They are happy to see it. Uh, the firefighters, the different conferences we've seen, as I mentioned er earlier, were really excited. The fact they could train in their specific space. They, they, they like that idea instead of generic spaces and all. And so uh, that's primarily it. It, it. They're, they want to see that you can go into their community and do, as Larry said, sets and reps. Mm -hmm. Larry, any anything else additional before we move on to, on the topic? No, I just think it's the ability for the Matterport service providers and scanning providers in the marketplace to be able to continue to look at ways they can take more value, more unique scenarios, more complexity, more richness to their current clients who already trust them and value their work to share more insights and more things they can use that, that are valuable for their business. So, uh, and you know, our, our job is to here to help them grow their business and help support them. So I would suggest for our, our viewers, Matterport service providers, that, to think about two things as we go through this, this next phase of the show. The first is you may be sitting on dozens or hundreds or thousands of spaces, of Matterport spaces that are of schools, museums, theaters, public spaces, commercial buildings, where your client would find it helpful to do training scenarios, either with police, fire, emergency medical responders, or their own training, which may just be uh, whatever their training needs might be. Um, and uh, Bill, is it possible to go back to any previous Matterport tour that a Matterport service provider still has and order a Matterport Matter Pack? Yes, any scan that you've done, uh, you can go back in in the add on section and download the Matter Pack. Uh, again, you request it, it'll bill you, and it'll be emailed to you pretty quickly. So this is huge because, as, as, as Larry said, you may already have, probably already have clients that know, like, and trust you. You already have scanned their space. Now, here is an opportunity to go back and say, here's yet another use case for Matterport leveraging this Matterport Matter Pack that includes a .obj file. So you may, as a Matterport service provider, already be sitting on uh, this vast library of tours that there's a whole nother use case that, that you can uh, charge your client for uh, in a variety of ways. And, the, and that the second uh, way I would ask for our viewers to, to look at this show is to say, oh, okay, I can go out to schools or museums or theaters or public spaces or commercial spaces uh, where there's an opportunity to literally the first sale is related to um, police, fire, and emergency medical responders as the use case. And oh, by the way, 
after we've shot the space for that purpose, you now have the Matterport tour as we all think about it for other purposes, whether it's marketing or, or literally 27 other ways to use Matterport. So uh, uh, intro to our set service provider network for Matterport service providers. Bill, what is it? Tell us about this, this RSP network. So hey, the man. Man. Hey, Bill, 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 before that, as we're trying to talk to what thousands and thousands of people who follow Dan and who, who, who trust his advice and counsel in terms of steering them to ideas in this space, Bill, before you do that, I want to go back to how we can help Matterport service providers drive value for their clients, which inherently will drive value for their own individual business, right? So, so what I would do if I was them is I look at my client list. And I'd identify those top 10 or 15% of my clients who do the most work with Beam, who are the most creative, who are the ones who tend to have the toughest questions and the toughest problems they want me to help them solve. And I would look at those and identify different sorts of scenarios and use cases that I can go back to them with and say, what if, what if we could do overlay multiple scans over time for training on new environments? What if we could be able to do some pre-planning on reconstruction of a warehouse, a manufacturing facility, whatever it might be? Ask them those questions. You'll be surprised that when you start asking questions in areas where their clients brought up or important to them in the past, some of them will say, yes, I want your help on that. And that's high value help that you'll be providing them. And again, as I said, not only does it provide revenue to you, but we as our set will help you increase the value and richness of that so that's good for all of us. And the most important thing is the end client, which is your client, receives disproportionate value. So sorry to jump in there, but this is really important. We're trying to help the uh, the Matterport service provider community drive value for their clients and value for their own business. Yeah, Larry, to follow up on that, uh, a whole category for Matterport service providers are, are commercial spaces, commercial office spaces. Uh, what what are some of the questions that you might ask uh, a trusted client uh, that that helps lead into this conversation? Well, that that's that, Dan. That's actually I was going to share that, but you must have read my mind, and we did not script this ahead of time. I would ask questions like, in this environment, are, is your client, you know, are you, Mister Client, looking at repurposing this space? by the way, right? Because given interest rates and the economy, et cetera, some of them might be considering repurposing space. Are you looking to do renovations or upgrades or enhancements? Are you considering selling this space and need to market it in different ways? Uh, you know, these are the sorts of questions you can ask them. And I bet you, you get some inputs from them that they want to be able to capture, show changes, and be able to market different things about their environments that they have significant capital probably tied up in. And, um, uh, you know, at the end of the day, people who own and develop real estate, that's what they do. They're I'm not in our business or our MSP business. You can bring them creative ideas like that to, to, uh, to drive value and bottom line dollars to their bottom line. I'm, I'm confused though, Larry, what, what, what does that have to do with police, fire, emergency medical responders, uh, commercial office space, uh, planning to make changes to the environment? We lost your audio. I'm oh, sorry, guys. A lot of folks in commercial office space right now, given COVID, the reduction of people in the marketplace and going to offices, et cetera, are rethinking how they're going to use assets and use office space in buildings and square footage. So there's ways to go back to them who own that, and they can consider different options for that. There, there, I mean, you engage in the conversation with your client. A lot of time, other issues come up. Uh, well, uh, it, are you asking that question be, because our set can be used for space planning, or are you asking because you you want to get into specifically uh, emergency respond uh, emergency responders, uh, police, fire being able to do prep for commercial space? Our set can be used for respace planning, yes, but it can also, as we said before, it is very important to be able to assess those spaces map them out so police, fire, EMS, et cetera, can map those environments out and potentially plan for and or do virtual or digital training in those spaces if they change. So it's all the above. It depends on the conversation with your client if you're a Matterport 
service provider in the marketplace? Well, I'm thinking on, uh, in particular, on schools and museums. Uh, uh, you know, there's not a week that doesn't go by that, that, that there's some awful mass casualty event, and I imagine that schools and museums, in particular, are th as public spaces, are thinking about uh, and working with uh, police, fire, emergency medical responders uh, ab about uh, well, what if? And I could imagine that some of that planning is done either as a, a walkthrough by the fire marshal, that it's done off of a traditional two-dimensional floor plan. Uh, uh, so uh, if, if I'm asking a, a, a commercial, if I'm asking, let's say, a school or a museum about, uh, if I'm asking my existing client who I've already done a Matterport tour of their school, of their museum, uh, uh, and I ask a question about emergency preparedness, is it likely that I'm going to get an answer that, oh, yes, we do, in fact, plan on such scenarios? How might you help us with that? Yeah, well, so uh, so we have a use case uh, where the police officers actually walk through the schools from their desktop in their department because actually walking through the schools right now for getting familiarity with the school can be a little traumatizing to the kids. Then they come in with the police are there or anything else. There's a little concern that goes through this. So they say, we sit at our desktop, we can walk through, make sure we know where the library is, where the kitchen is, where any back hallways or anything that might be. So they can, that is the use case that a lot of police have actually- But, but I could do that with the Matterport tour that exists today. I don't need my Matterport Matter Pack for that purpose. Well, you can, but then you can also enhance it. Yes, you're right. But then you actually can save. okay, but what if we had something in the west corner of the building? If there was somebody here and we deployed, how do we handle going through this space? So where are our pinch points? Where could we be sniped if we weren't careful, if we came through? And you can do that on your desktop with an actually assailant in that put in there that's shooting at you in the space. So and you can build VR with it too. To, to, to expand on that a little bit, um, the use cases for these spaces uh, to alleviate um, and to improve outcomes for those terrible situations is actually two pronged. The first is we've covered pretty well uh, when it's used for training and pre-planning uh, by the police themselves. Uh, but there is a second group of people that are very intrinsically involved in the outcome of any of these events, and that is the victims themselves, like the, the people that are involved and in the space when some one of these tragedies strikes. And the feedback we've gotten from the schools we've talked to and a few of the commercial venues we've talked to is, especially when we've got both police and administrators in the room at the same time, the police understand like, yeah, this is going to be great training opportunities for us. The surprising part is the administrators also want that same training because the the complexity and chaos that happens in a situation like that cannot be delivered looking at a, a, a Matterport web view, right? Like you can't spawn in screaming children. You can't spawn in- Sorry, I don't know what spawn means. I'm sorry, you cannot add to an environment, to a Matterport scan, uh, a bunch of screaming children, right? There, there would be no way to- uh, to showcase that, to showcase the chaos but you, of- You can do that within the Matterport Matterpack.obj version that our set is using. Right, so let me, I'm gonna fire up a video here and to preface right. the video because there is sound on this one. Um, if if there's kids or it, it, sensitive to gunfire, there is a bit of that. Um, but to preface this video, think about- so so, uh, Mike, you've uh, frozen, Michael, maybe. Uh, Michael, you're back. Uh, uh, you froze there for, Mike, uh, you're back. You froze there for a moment. Uh, okay. Also, when you go to share, you may want to share the sound on it. And uh, if you go ahead and share. And, you know, and and even though this is a, a super sensitive topic, I've, I've asked uh, the RSET team to share some of this video with us because at the end of the day, this is about saving lives and reducing injuries. Uh, right. And it's that important. So if, if if you're if you're in this space, this this matters. So this you is got, a, go ahead, Bill. 
let's say this is a middle school. We set up a scenario and we scanned it and set up a scenario. And you can put what type of training you want, how many people you want in the scene. And uh, I just let the play. So that was set up completely in that That's good, man. That's that's enough. Okay, and and, and if I'm not mistaken, in in these scenarios, uh, uh, since we talked last, it's I believe that adversaries can now be spawned in that use artificial intelligence, AI, and shoot back. Shoot back at you, yes. Yeah. Correct. That behavior profile can be tuned to a variety of, of, of circumstances. So if you've got someone that is there to die, uh, they're going to act differently than someone that isn't quite so committed. Um, and the response oftentimes will, will vary based on that. Um, and that's, an, just to be clear, that is a character that is spawned into the space that may have AI that responds to a particular persona. Correct. Okay. So uh, just to kind of switch gears a little bit, and then we'll, we'll jump into our topic. Uh, uh, Bill, I think what I heard from you earlier was that uh, uh, that you, you've talked to some first responders, might have been police, fire, emergency medical responders, that said, gee, what keeps me up at night is this particular space, and I wish I could be using this for that space. Are those first responders potential advocates to be able to actually, I mean, I could go to a potential space and have a conversation, or perhaps do I go to the fire department and say, let me show you this, uh, which commercial spaces, which schools, museums, theaters, would you like to do this training in? And I'll go back to those schools, museums, theaters, commercial spaces, and propose that they pay for this scan and this training uh, to enable you to be able to do this, right? I mean, that's part of the question who pays for it. Is it the, com is it the commercial space or is it the police, fire, emergency re uh, medical responders? Well, as for who pays for it, that's, that's still to be determined in the situation by situation. We don't know all of them. If it's a commercial space and you're wanting to let them do the training in it, they could probably ask, they could probably have the scan done and work with their local uh, first responders to say, hey, we're doing a scenario. But yes, you're very right that there are, we've had a lot of feedback from the different shows we've attended where firefighters are saying, we have these old buildings, we have these areas we're concerned, we would like to know how we would handle that if the situation came. And, we, and even with the new Pro 3, you can scan outside the building, which is, uh, we, we saw the one example in there, which is a command sim situation. When you come up on this building, where do we put the ladder truck? Where do we put the hose truck? How close can we get to the building without a problem? If the building, if the fire is on one side of the building, there's a different set of rules. If they're on this side, it's another set of rules, the way we have to deal with it. So that's been the discussion is we would really like to clamp, scan this space and then run the different engineers through what they would do in this situation. Okay. So uh, again, Pro 3, outdoor, high ceilings, uh, large spaces, uh, be better quality scan data, better dot OBJ. Uh, are, are the police, fire, emergency medical responders, is, is that someone to team up with to show what is possible and say, hey, if you tell me the space, I'll, I'll go tell them that you'd like to do a training scenario in their space. But the first thing is for that commercial space to pay for this or, or to somehow figure out whether the school pays for it or the fire department pays for it uh, or yet some other way to pay for it. Well, exactly. Uh, again, the fire department, the firefighters would be advocate for it. So the fire chiefs would be advocates for it. They would say, hey, we would really like to train in this space. Now, long term, again, if they need to get into the, the government 
in the area paying for the scans or something that would be worked out with between the department and the budgets and things like that. But they're definitely advocates for getting it done. Um, it, uh, we can also talk about when we when we get into the RSP stuff though, where uh, if we're working with the fire department, there will be they will need scans in certain places, and we're we're not going to be in those cities, but we can maybe find somebody that is uh, there that can actually do it. Okay, so so let's talk about the RSET service provider network. Uh, this is something that you're talking about for the first time, I believe. WGA and TV Live at five. Tell us about the RSET service provider network for Matterport service providers. Yes, so the RSET service provider network, the RSP as we're calling it, is um, we're opening up a beta program for 50 users right now that we're going to vet and try to join our team to be the uh, emissaries to go out and start talking about and reselling their services. So they could resell their scans, they could provide scan services to different first responders, uh, other departments that might need this, schools, libraries, where you might want, they could go in and do the scanning themselves. And then they can sell seats of our set and continue to service the people in that area doing scans. You might need multiple scans done in a single space. You might need iterative scans done after construction and things like that. They would be working with them in that space to say, we will support your RSET seat by multiple scans. And that's how we would work the, with these departments. And they could resell the different seats of our set. Uh, again, as I just was mentioning, if we're we're all Kentucky based, but if you had someone in Atlanta that needed a scan done and they had a seat of our set, we also will do like many others do contact the Matterport network and say that we have a representative in Atlanta that could do the scans for the fire stations. They've been vetted. They've worked with us before. Uh, ultimately, we like to have a larger network, but we're starting this beta right now just to get our, get our feet wet and see how this works. So I go to either rset, R-S-E-T dot com, look up at the top, there's a tab that, that says service provider network, or I go directly to uh, rset dot com forward slash R-S-P, and I sign up, I sign up today, and I qualify, whatever that it means. What is it that I get as part of this R-S-P program? So we will work with you once we get you into the system and decide that you're a good fit for the program. Uh, we will get the agreements in place to understand how we're going to work with this out together. And then we will give you the ability, the marketing material that we have to say, I'm going out to my local fire departments. I'm going to my local volunteer departments. I'm going to my local schools and I'm going to sell my services, not only as a Matterport scanner, but as an RSET uh, provider. And at that point, they can either choose to sell the RSET seats. By being a member of the beta program, you will get RSET Pro free for a year with us. So you'll be able Let, to- Let's back up. Stuff. I'm sorry. Let's back up for a moment because you have three different off-the-shelf solutions that right, I yes. can buy. So can you tell us about what those three are and when I buy one versus the other and how many seats that I need of each? Okay, so the first uh, level is our set light, and that is a single scan and can only be used in that one scan. You can do uh, once whatever's built in that scan or that scenario, it never goes outside of that scan. That's a one time thing. Uh, the next level is oh, our set. Oh, and is that a, a seat? So, for example, if I want 10 first responders to each be able to have their own account to be able to look at that. Not on the light level, not on the light level. That is simply you're working with a single client and it may not really apply as much to the first responder market for this. It may or may not. We'll have to see. That's more like maybe your facilities management situation and you just want to always have the one scan you can walk around within your place and look up things and something like that. So it's a one level seat on that. Within the data, within the data view, the dot OBJ. Within that, exactly, within that one OBJ. The okay. RSET that's ghost. The R, that's the RSET. Light. Light. Then the yes. second of three is? RSET Go, which gives you all the exploration and the training tools that you need with many seats as you want, as many scans as you want, as many obey OBJs if you want. So if you are a volunteer department, I would suggest getting like three to four uh, RSET Go seats 
and let them do training with each other in that space because we can do network training. And that could be done in all the schools in their district, all the library, library, any kind of public building they wanted to scan, they could all work together in that space. That's the goal level and the mid level. The pro level is what we use to create the scenarios where you actually build the shooting situation, which you actually set the fire. We actually create the mass casualties. Those scenario files can be pushed out to our set go our set go users. So that's where we're enabling the RSP network. They will have uh, a seat of our set pro. They can sell the seats of our oh, set. Hang, go. hang on, went a little bit fast for him. I'm still trying okay. to understand. That's all right. The difference between our set light, our set go, our set pro. I think what I'm hearing is is for our audience, there's only really two that matter, the RSET Go and RSET Pro. And the difference is, is if your client wants to be able to customize the scenarios, then they're going to need RSET Pro. Yes. Okay. Right. So, so for our purpose of our discussion today is if your client really wants custom so solutions of what kind of scenario takes place, RSET Pro. And if you can live with whatever scenarios have already been created that are within the library, that's RSET Go. Is that, I described that okay? That's a good description of it. Although the library may not be, you may have certain small scenarios in that, but most of the scenarios are going to be uh, just matter packs you've ingested, the OBJs that you've ingested. Okay, so if you if you go to rset.com and you set up a free account, uh, you'll then have an opportunity after you set up a free account to see the three different packages. And really, the one you want to focus on is the RSET Pro, and then leading into the RSP program, the RSET Service Provider Network program, uh, is that those MSPs that are accepted get a free RSET Pro account. For a year. For a year, yes. For one year. year. Okay. One year. And uh, just, just as an example, Dan, just so, you, so you maybe to help clarify, our local fire department, they were doing emergency medical training with them. They have RSET Go, and they can train in them, but they didn't have anybody on staff that they wanted to used and learned to use RSET Pro. So that's where we kind of opened this up. We would build the scenarios for them, but we want to actually train other Matterport providers to build these scenarios and let them resell them to their existing departments. Oh, well, that's interesting. So I, I'm I'm geeky, but I'm not I'm not a tech. Do I do I need to be a coder programmer to be able to use the RSET no. uh, uh, Pro platform mm -hmm. to be able to stage scenarios? No, it, it is drag and drop. Everything is really easily done. We can also randomly generate them. You can just hit and it'll randomly generate stuff in it. But it's 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 really, when we built this initially for the Marines, we were charged to build something that was built like playing a video game. If you can play Call of Duty, you can run our set. And that's what we did. It's really simple. Drag a person, set a fire, bring in smoke. It's mostly just drag and put things in place. You do not need any coding experience. So just to be clear on this, the reason that I, as a Matterport service provider, would want to have an RSET Pro account is that I literally could go into a space that I've already have previously done, buy the Matterport uh, Matter Pack for $49, import the Matterport uh, OBJ file into the RSET platform and be able to trick out the space, for lack of a better term, with fire, smoke, sound, uh, victims, shooters, uh, maybe not for the purpose of being able to say, here's the training. Maybe you're thinking that they're going to actually do the training. I don't think I'm qualified to, to do the training, but I think I could probably use that to be able to show to a potential client to say, hey, this is your space. Imagine that we actually had the fire department work with us to stage this space in the scenarios that mattered to them, uh, either for uh, active shooter, 
for uh, fire suppression, for mass casualty. Uh, again, I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but I, as a matter for a service provider, I'm not thinking that I have that expertise to pro- create those scenarios, but I have uh, enough skill in order to be able to demo that to a potential client of how powerful this platform, the RSET platform is in this scenario. Maybe I ask uh, Larry on that. Do you want to comment? Well, no. So, so, so Dan, you're, you're spot on an example. I'll give you a, you know, nothing's more germane in life than a real specific example from somebody who has to deal with the implications in the real world. So we had um, a senior captain in Kansas city from the Kansas city fire department just last week when we were at the fire rescue international show and his comment specifically was, so I get it. My training budget's been cut. Hundreds of guys got to be trained. I don't exactly, I can't do all of this in training live, but I'm limited only to my mind in creating the scenarios I need to create for either specific clients or new buildings or new schools or new scenarios. I can create those and we're like, exactly. So what a Matterport service provider can do that is working in that district can actually work with their customers to uncover those sorts of scenarios that they want to drive, do different scans and actually do the tricking out or add non-player characters or add randomly generated assets and images, et cetera, to create those scenarios that their client wants. That's the difference. And that's what they get with pro versus light and go. So the intent is for a Matterport service provider to be able to understand how to use RSET Pro to trick out a, a space, but ultimately to be able to have either their client buy RSET Pro so that the fire department, the police department, the uh, emergency medical responders can build out their own scenarios or inversely for maybe the client pays for the Matterport scan and the local uh, uh, police fire emergency medical responders uh, buy the license uh, for RSET Pro in order to trick out the space the way they need for active shooter, fire suppression, mass casualty, uh, event training, whatever the training exercise might be before or after uh, an incident. You you stated that quite well, Dan. That's oh, okay. exactly. And, and remember, different end clients have different technology aptitudes and capabilities. So it's up to that Matterport service provider in their local areas, and there's thousands of them in different thousands of areas, to assess their clients. And if they need expertise on the technology, on some initial setup to get some um, uh, juice in the vein of their client to be able to be understanding of how to use that. We can help them with that, get them along the path of understanding the tool, and then we'll step back. We clearly want to enable through the RSP, the Matterport service providers in the RSP program to be as successful as possible to drive new clients, new revenue streams, new deals. We'll support them as needed because it's good for our set because we're clearly looking to drive growth in our software platform and distribution. And we want to enable the uh, Matterport service providers to drive the unique solutions into their markets. We can't do that in thousands of markets. That's not our job. We want to enable the MSP network through the RSP program to do that. So I I think I'm hearing three things in in there, Larry. Uh, The the first is our sets providing the free for the first year, the RSET Pro uh, account to an MSP so they can really get their arms and legs around it. Second, there is a, a commission opportunity on uh, uh, selling RSET uh, seats, wh- whether that's for yep. the RSET Lite, RSET Go, RSET Pro. Uh, th- then, since this is a new program, and I think our set is still trying to maybe with your eyes closed, figure out in the dark, maybe there's this training scenario for that is to figure our, out. Our, well, our eyes are open, but in the dark. We're trying to figure out the program and we're going we're gonna to help 50, help 50 of them figure it out with us. Perfect. So if that means you need help, you're a Matterport service provider and you go, oh my gosh, 
this is over my head, but I got the right client. They said they're interested, but I, I couldn't possibly think about trying to trick out the space. But I, I, I showed them a clip out of the show. They looked at their space. Maybe I was able to, to spawn a, uh, a victim uh, to, for EMS, uh, but this is really over my head. Uh, I can call RSET and get help, whatever that help might look like. Uh, and, and, and that's to be defined. Uh, it, it, it may be that, uh, your, uh, lead, you, uh, lead unity developer, Michael Probst might be brought into the project to say, Hey, Michael, we're real close to getting a sale. Can you help us build out a scenario using this specific, uh, Matterport space dot OBJ for this specific example, we don't need you to build the whole thing just enough so that the client says, "Oh, okay, I'll in, I'll engage, I'll 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 buy the license, and I'll I'll train on it." That, yeah, Dan. I mean, we're we're going to end up probably having hundreds of MSPs sign up. We're going to run through some criteria to accept fifty that we believe we can help them scale their business. They have hundreds or thousands of scans or dozens of clients out there. We're going to run through a filter here in the near term when those folks sign up. And then those ones have got the ability to scale businesses. We are going to be delighted to lend our expertise and our technology help and our team to help them scale because we want to serve the end customers. And that means we need to service our network of folks who will help take what we believe is a great solution and platform to the marketplace. So we're going to help them drive their business, which of course is good for our business. So uh, if I have lots of Matterport existing scans, including schools, museums, theaters, public spaces, commercial spaces, I have a library that exists already to go back to. So I probably should uh, uh, run, don't walk, to go to rset.com forward slash RCP, sign up. Uh, and if I'm, I've am i watched the show and I said, nah, I, I just want to refer people to you. I, I'll make my money on scanning. I'll make my money on hosting. I'll mark up the, the, the matter pack, uh, the Matterport matter pack. Can I just throw this over the fence to you and have you pick it up from there. I, I don't really need to be part of the RSET service provider network to refer business to you. So, so as somebody who focuses on strategy, business development and growth, the answer is uh, a big resounding YES on that one, Dan, because, and again, and I'm not being facetious, there are a lot of Matterport service providers out there who've got very successful growing businesses doing the course basic things that they do. And that's terrific. If we can help them grow in different unique ways, wonderful. If they wanna help um, grow the value delivered to their clients and introduce us, we would be delighted for those introductions and to bring incremental value to their clients with us taking the lead and qualifying those opportunities and uh, doing our best to determine what's best for their end client without them being heavily involved. But if I want to get a commission on the RSET software, the seats, then I should really be part of the uh, RSET service provider network. You sure should. Okay. So uh, how do I know if I'm qualified to, to, to be? Can you, can you give us some things of what you're looking for? You look, is, it, is it help if I have a Pro 3 versus a Pro 2? Uh, does it help if I've already scanned a thousand spaces? Does it help if I've scanned a dozen spaces? Uh, is it helpful if I've actually have done schools, museums, theaters, public spaces, commercial spaces? What, what is, is it helpful that I have some uh, adept skill at like, oh, this would be cool. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a gamer. I would find it really interesting and exciting to, to uh, you know, I play Call of Duty. I would like to try and, and, you know, stage a space and actually go make some money by showing my existing clients or potential clients. What's is there, Larry's or criteria here? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Bill handle that. He's uh, th This is right up his alley. 
Now, well, actually, what we're going to do is look at total of the applicants we have over the next little bit and, and judge if they've had the experience we think we need. If you're a brand new scanner and you haven't done a lot, I, we welcome you at a later point, possibly, but we want to know that you uh, can handle getting a lot of spaces done, that you've got, that you work with the clients well. That's really, we're going to have to fill a lot of it out. A lot of it's to be determined. Uh, again, we're not the word turn. I, again, we would love to have you back, but if you're really small, maybe not just yet. Uh, we'll see how this goes as the whole program. But yes, you do need to have your Matterport in your Matterport account. Uh, we will gladly take Pro, Pro 2 users as well, not Pro 3 users. If you have both, all the better. You know, we, we really can take all the above. And we need experience scanning. Uh, one thing with the Matterport scanning, if you scan for our set, it is a little bit different scanning than scanning for a Matterport scan for real estate selling. And very often it's just one or two spots in the room and that's all they need. We need to make sure you've gotten around the corners and that the whole face place is uh, fill, filled out. Uh, no, no blank spots in the scan. And quite often, again, if you're just selling real estate, you don't need to do all that necessarily. So um, we don't have a hard set of criteria at the moment. We're, we're filling this out. Okay, before we say bye, Dan, the, the last point is the, the difference in scanning for different industries, whether it be real estate or for what work, some of the work we're doing, we're going to be very clear and specific to the MSPs, right, of giving them detailed criteria and input to help them be successful in the most efficient way. We're not, we're not expecting them to produce great quality scans without our input. We'll be very specific in helping bringing them along the way. You know, if, if they're accepted in the program, we want them to be successful. It's very simple. And I imagine there's a there's a lot of training modules so that if you're interested in a deep dive training of how to trick out a, a space for police, fire, emergency medical responders, it, it's, it's there for those that are interested in taking it to the next level. As an RSET service provider network member, a uh, Matterport service provider. Um, is there, uh, Larry, Bill, Michael, Mike, uh, before we say bye, is there anything else that I should have asked that we should discuss? No, it's been great. Appreciate you having us on and uh, look forward to seeing how this goes. And we'll report to you again once, it, uh, once we get going. Awesome. So you can visit, uh, the website is rset.com. Look up at the top, there's a menu for the RSET service provider network, or you can go directly to the application, uh, the application to, to uh, request membership in the RSET service provider network, the website rset.com forward slash RSP. And again, if you want a deep dive uh, on RSET, we did an entire show, go to wgan.info forward slash RSET on WGAN. You can watch that entire one hour show that we that we we did with uh, our set before uh, for. Uh, uh, so let's see. Uh, Michael, Mike, Larry. Bill, thank you again for being on the show. Uh, our guests today were. Uh, RSET founder and CEO Bill Gregory, Mike Schmidt, Chief Technology Officer for RSET, RSET Advisor and Chief Strategy Officer Larry Dana, and RSET Lead Unity Developer Michael Propes. For the RSET team in the greater Lexington, Kentucky area, I'm Dan Smakebrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN-TV live at 5.